tight. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> October 1st. <laughs> oh. A little bit of. Ooh, I got to cool down this hot cocoa. This, this falls in the air. <laughs> I'm going to cool down my pumpkin spice oh. pumpkin. I put a little pumpkin spice all over my pumpkins now, and then I, I sniff the pumpkins. Mm. Oh, it's here, James. It's Oct- October. Mm. Uh, does not feel Chilly. like October whatsoever. Chilly. Mm? Chilly. It's not chilly. Yeah. Uh, does not feel like October. It was 94 degrees this weekend. I'm mm-hmm. almost blacked out unconscious coaching my <laughs> child's soccer game on Saturday. Yeah. Got to the heat. Got to daddy. Huh? Yeah. I, it, like after, Daddy couldn't handle the heat. No, it's fine. After two hours, though, you're like, oh, sure. man, we're really going we are at it. Really and you're it. trying to keep up with five-year-olds playing soccer. Sure. So uh, it went well. Right, I'm sure. He scored. Is it weird that I bribed him with toys? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, we'll talk about it. And I do want to talk about that. Well, is it good? I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't is. want the I disappointment... If he doesn't get one, I think that compounds the disappointment to where it should just be like, so if he doesn't get a score a goal and yeah. doesn't get a toy, yeah. that's double disappointment. Is it though? Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I've done two games mm-hmm. so far and uh, he's scored in every single game. Okay. Really amped about that toy. But that's kind of life, I feel like, right? You got to dangle a little carrot out there. Well, I want the carrot great. to be winning. I want the hunger to come from a primal. I want to fucking win. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? But you also have to have some incentive, right? Like take the NFL, for example. If you weren't playing for money, you think any of those guys would be playing right now? Otherwise, um, it'd just be a backyard not game. Not now, and- but I think when they were younger... Clearly, they had to have something. I don't think every one of those guys mm-hmm. was bribed with toys when they were younger. They had to have some kind. They had Probably to like not. it, right? Or their dad had to force them to do it, or they wanted to prove something to somebody, or they were just naturally good. Or but at five, though, I think there's got to be some level of bribery. Otherwise, it's you know a butterfly runs around and then everybody's after that. Right. Because at five, you don't have any focus. Nobody does. Sure. I uh, coached T-ball, what was it, the year before? Yeah. And boy, well, that, that was, was like just... herding cats. You know? That's a different situation. I think you should be much older for baseball. Uh, and then the other fact is there, there's some, also some six-year-olds out there. Mm-hmm. So a year older. Right. And uh, going up, that's a big difference. Man, you don't really realize it. You're like, eh, what's the difference between five and six? Yeah. It feels like a foot, like a foot of height. Yeah. There was one six-year-old out there just annihilating peeps. I think we should just go old school. The incentive is your father's love. You know, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I had. So it's like I played softball. Uh, I was good at it. My dad praised that. But did you play, did you play at five? Um, I don't think I played at five. You don't no. know. And that's the thing. You don't, don't really so know. Yeah. But that'll set you up for later, I think. You know? I think that maybe you should try a different tactic. Maybe withhold... Your love for for the entire weekend, and just tell him, hey, you know, uh, Daddy will continue to love you I don't if you think... get one goal, and then we can go very Friday Night Lights. You yeah, know? yeah. I'll I'll duct tape the uh, lamp to his hand, mm-hmm. um, or, or football or whatever it is. Sure, is it uh, a lamp? I don't know. It's, it sounds right. Have you, you know? seen that movie? Let's put a lamp up. It's been a while. Let's put a lamp up. It's a football thing, Duct right? Duct tape the lamp to his hand. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Duct tape a soccer ball to his foot. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> no, because I, I was trying to think about it, right? Um, at five years old, you don't have any you don't brains, know what's going I know. On. Yeah, you don't know what's going on. Therefore, when I was thinking about it, of like, hey, how do I get him to focus and pay yeah. attention and play? Hey. 
Toys was the only thing that came to mind. Sure. Because <laughs> love, he doesn't understand. No. Like a father's love, he doesn't understand, you know? Like, hey, go sleep in the garage. I was totally joking I'm about not, you. Jesse. I'm not. Um, Please don't do that. <laughs> I was I saying just in a very subtle way. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but get the job done, and he was amped about it. Good. He was amped about it, so. Good. Um, it worked out well. I hate to see the day that he doesn't score a goal. Maybe there won't be. And then we'll maybe revisit this. I think, but you, listen. I think you find out about Drive when you're, I'm going to say third or fourth grade. That's what, I think that's when I figured out mine. Do you? Do you? Figured out agree? drive at what? Do you agree? At what? How old were you? I think fourth or fifth grade is when I really started to focus and want to do things, like do things well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll go with fourth grade. I think actually. Okay. For me personally, where I was like, all right, I want to get straight A's. I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to be awesome at sports. Mm-hmm. I want to be better than. Yeah, I think mine was sixth grade. The other kids. Um, but until then, it's like. Do you really know? Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. You're right. So, eh, toy. Eh. The toy did it. You did it. And he was out there like a white Pele. Good for you. You know? <laughs> Good for you. Speaking of Friday Night Lights. Yeah. The writer of the book, uh-huh. Buzz Bessinger. Yep. Uh, he is right. I just saw a documentary. Mm-hmm. I think it was HBO. It's called Buzz. And it's about him writing Caitlyn Jenner's book. Oof. And realizing during writing it that he himself needs to be a possibly a gal. Are you, are you serious? Yeah, like he's this very right. I mean, Friday Night Lights, and like that's strange. Yeah, that guy, that writer. Man, that is wild. It's weird. It's an interesting. It's I could put it in the segment of what you're watching, but um, yeah, it was interesting. Um. It was interesting. These old, these old guys that uh, I think they decide, need to become ladies. Yeah, it's, yeah a don't newer, have it's a newer thing. No, it's uh, <sighs> it's old. It's been going on since the dawn of time. No, it's not. But yeah, I, I just I don't know why it's a thing. Like, you know, I think it, it could be a thing of boredom and being rich, where you're just like, eh, what else? is I left? think it can be a hormone thing, a therapy, and a hor- I mean, as you get older, your hormones, it's as true. you you know. They change they a do. lot. That is, that is true, yes. Um, there are some people that have felt that way for a long time, I guess. Bruce, you know. Right. But uh, this Buzz guy, it was fairly new, mm. you know? Sure, sure. And it's kind of something he should probably that I, take some time with that. Yeah, definitely. Don't go lopping off dicks real quick. Take some time with it. Really, really sit with that decision. What I learned from the movie, too, is that he is an amazing writer. He's incredible. I, so I read that. I read it. Yeah. I read Friday Night Lights, by the way. Yeah. Um, one of the best books I'd ever read. And yeah. I remember when it, uh, when they were casting that movie in L.A., there was very th- few things that I was just like, dude, I have to be in Give on this. It. Yeah. And um, they were like, I was just out of the age range at that point. And I was so pissed. Uh, one of my best friends, though, got it, who's been on the show, Christian Kane. Yeah. Uh, he ended up getting a role in it. But it, it was like uh, an older alumni you know yeah whereas i was going for the yeah yeah the player and and he was great in it he was really great and that movie's still one of my favorites to this day oh yeah oh yeah it still holds up to this day booby miles yes um all of it the music the tim mcgraw in it was amazing i guess i didn't know they were based on real people or they are real people yeah i mean so he in the movie visits booby in prison oh in this one in the documentary. No shit. Yeah. Wow. I didn't know he was in prison. Yeah. I mean, I think he got a bad rap for sure, right? I don't know. I, in the I, movie? I just know him from the movie. Well, but what happens in the movie? So the movie, he was a superstar running back. He gets yeah. hurt. Okay. Really yeah. Bad, and mm-hmm. then uh, they don't know if he's going to so play. So uh, the idea was that but when he was playing, he was getting straight A's for doing nothing. He got hurt, and uh-huh. then they made him actually do shit. Yeah. And it was like, now I'm getting fucking. Oof. I did not know that. Yeah, so it was this, that's the whole thing of Friday Night Lights, right? Where they put more importance on making sure that the football team has the very best equipment more than they do the actual academics of the school, right? So that was the whole thing of the movie. Um, And so when he got hurt, 
it showed that like you just go right back in to the system. Oh yeah. They don't give a fuck about yeah. you. You're getting fucking D's and F's because whereas before he was like they would give him the tests, they would give him the answers. I mean, he was taken care of. Yeah. And they would have done that all the way to the end had he not gotten hurt, right? And so then he just got fucked up basically in life. Got it. I look uh, hosting the sports show for Drinking Bros, mm -hmm. we get to interview a lot of athletes. And as a kid, you think that these men are gods, right? Yeah. And then there's been a few times where I've got to interview people that I've looked up to, and I was just like, and they'll ask me things afterwards, and I'm like, oh shit, man, you're just a regular fucking dude now. Whereas, like, when you, because when you stop playing, yes, that is when it ends, and you're like, oh shit. Um, like I've had conversations with a few of them that I looked up to, like really looked up to and, and what, ha I mean, what happened? Two things. Um, some of them were ahead of their time where, uh, and when I say ahead of their time, the money changed with like, take the NFL, right? The, the NFL money changed like right around the end of the, I don't know, what do we call in that era? The 2000. Right before 2010. Yeah. So the, the, two th the end of the 2000s, mm -hmm. I guess, which still sounds weird. That money changed. And so one of them was straight up honest with me. He was like, hey, man, as great as I was, if I would have played just four years later, just started four years later, he goes, I'd be the richest dude on the planet right now. And he goes, as it stands now, I have enough money to get through life, but still... I can't buy shit the way I really want to buy shit or travel the way I want to travel. And I was like, and it was a refreshing way to hear, uh, you know, what it's really like. But he would never say that on camera. And he would never say that on the thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then others were, you know, the other guys have always said to me that when you play at that level, it is the ultimate high in life. And when that high ends, which is usually around 30, or in your 30s. Mm. You realize how young you are in life. Yes. And, and then how you've you got to live the yeah. next 40 years. Probably knowing that that was as good as it will get in your life. Um, unless you find something else. Yeah. So a lot of these guys look up to like Magic Johnson um, or LeBron. Because they have so many business ventures outside of it. That it's like, all right, there's something else to conquer besides playing. Mm -hmm. and most of 99% uh, of them don't have that. So I, I look, I have met a handful though, who are just like, yo, I got rich and it's awesome. And I'm going back to my farm and that's, uh, that's yeah, my life. I mean, and that's cool. When I, when, I, saying that? when I meet those guys, yeah, I'm like, that's awesome, man. Because you got it figured out, right? You don't have to worry about anything. And, uh, you know, one of them was just like, man, I get to hang out with my kids all day. Yeah. Uh, I get to go on trips and do whatever I want, and I have an amazing life. Gat was saying if, like, they got to them soon enough, right? So if you get, like, a financial manager mm -hmm. soon enough, right. then you can do that. But if you try after, all that money's already spent. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got to go off your name and how hot you are at the time. At the time. Um, and capitalize on all of those opportunities, but not a lot do. Um. They just don't understand where you're just like, everybody thinks they're going to be great forever and no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. And it's just not true out of pretty much any profession, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I like I'm, I'm gearing up for the point where I may no longer be great at writing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not, I think I got another 15 years out of it, but still I'll be a young dude where I'm just like, oh shit, man, I might be out of touch. Well, like Buzz was in his 60s, right? Mm -hmm. When he wrote the Caitlin or he is now. He wrote the Caitlin book. And I mean, f think what you will about Caitlin Jenner. It is Buzz. It's his book. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, they kind of showed that process too, which I thought was interesting of like, it's going to be Caitlin Jenner's fucking name on it. But he, Buzz literally just writes everything and then brings it to her. Right. Him. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. And um, just reads what he wrote and it's, amazing you know and she's like gives these horrible notes is that all I in the mean, documentary horrible yes her too to maybe we should say something like i was in like a private shadow and a, a public shame oh god bullshit 
and he's like and you could see him just being like yeah he's like yeah sure um i'll 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 revisit that i'll i'll circle back later and Oof. try and find another place for that and you just go oh my fucking god like he literally he wrote this whole thing and it's actually interesting Did he get credit on it let me no, ask you that uh find that i, I, I will. don't Is it- think so i i remember it being just caitlin jenner right like she mm. wrote it um because he it's interesting that she chose him because he's a mostly sports writer right so he does Le- well, lebron james l- let's face it he bruce jenner was an athlete that's so. what i'm saying yeah. so it was an interesting choice uh he's also amazing but it was an interesting choice uh he only writes i mean the first book he did with LeBron James. Is it, did it, so it came out in 2017? Mm-hmm. Okay. I, look, I'm looking at it now. Does he get credit? No. Yeah. So it's just her. And he kind of brings this up every once in a while. And she's like, don't go there, Buzz. This is my book. Oh, God. Don't go there, Buzz. And he's like, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing all the work. But anyway. Um, you know what's funny, man? I, looking, looking at this right now because I'm scrolling through it. Um, mm-hmm. First of all, it didn't do that well. It didn't even make the bestseller list. No. The New York Times bestseller list. No. One, two. I don't understand why people don't give the... Uh, look, it, it's getting better now. G- give the people credit who wrote the fucking book. Like, nobody's going to think that you, Caitlyn Jenner, wrote this book. Like, Snooki. Snooki's got a fucking bestseller. And the way bestseller. that he writes it, which is very... He has He's a, a fantastic st- writer. And he has a style, right? Yeah. So he has this... It's very clearly... Buzz's book. Sure. Right? And he's also dealing with the same things that she's dealing with. So in a way, he pretty much just wrote his book and added, you know, some sports shit and some whatever here. I'm but surprised really they into let it. the documentary go through. Um, I think at this point. It's two years later, I guess. You know, yeah. and it did what it's going to do. I'm sure she didn't want it out anywhere close to the book release, obviously. Yeah. But I think it's been enough time where he had some kind of, you know, God, I'm you sure know there was a contract. There always is yeah, a contract. Yeah, there's always a contract. I, uh, it's funny, man. Khloe Kardashian, because um, she's connected to this on, on Amazon, obviously. I remember her book came out. Uh, I, we were the same exact publisher, same exact time when they were working on this. And there, she has no writer on here as well. I know the ghostwriter who wrote this book. I was just like, come on, man. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Look, luckily, I didn't have to fucking go through that shit. But um, if I had to interview somebody who put you in their two cents all the time. should be. Uh, whoever wrote it should be on there. It, it doesn't, it, like, it's dumb. I Nobody's going to think you did be, this by yourself. I think we can be done with that, right? Because it was. Forever. Look, it's been happening for ever. Ever. And forever. it's so dumb. And like, there's, if you go back to any of the, you know books that you liked by someone memoir whatever you, you know, know for a fact yeah and you you know look you, you know the other thing is the only people who will care about their names being on there are the author and their families and that's it no one will give a shit like if it's a biography about yourself yeah great they'll that, say your name at the top it'll be your picture on the it. front it'll be about you tiny font for your name at the bottom as the other authors and then you're and that's fucking it. author you know Doesn't i make think any sense. we should even forget all of this fucking nonsense of the like with blah 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 lebron james and buzz bissinger you know what i mean i just want right. to i want to be done with that even and yeah. be like your face it could be <laughs> lebron james right uh the name of the book and then underneath i want the person that did literally all the work i uh i got into this with christy Teigen on twitter where somebody had wrote in about you know her book or she or somebody it's i said something she's a best-selling author and i was like she didn't write the fucking book no. um so let's be honest and then let's she re- she honest. replied i love how how hard you think it is to write sweetie that's what she replied to me um on twitter Go write a fucking book by yourself. Tell me how goddamn hard it is. Sit in a room. That's it. From beginning to end. Hours and hours a day and write a fucking book. Crafting. Yeah. Chapters. What does she have? Two kids? Sentences into chapters. She got chapters. two kids, right? Chrissy Teigen? Yes. Yeah. With two kids. Mm-hmm. Go and sit down for eight hours a day and write and then tell me how long it takes you. Mm-hmm. Just to write your first draft. Whenever yeah. that is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we should be all done with that all together. That guy's a fucking lights out. I did not know that story. I'm going to watch this document. Yeah. I mean, again, it's. It's weird, but he is 
Whatever, man. I'm looking for cool shit. He's insanely talented and a uh, really thoughtful writer and guy. And, you know, everyone's life path is what it is. But, man, talented dude. Yeah. Super talented. It's enough to... It, you should watch the documentary at least, at the very least, just to see Caitlyn Jenner fucking giving notes to Buzz Bissinger Yikes. on his fucking <sighs> writing. It'll make you want to kill her even more than you do man uh yeah i i didn't have to deal with that shit because a lot of people have asked me like hey would you write anybody else's book like consider helping them and i'm like man not really I, there's one it other depends. person yeah I, I know who you're talking about and one like, other I person think and that's be... about it where i'm like all right yes because i think that story is crazy like just absolutely crazy and would be amazing right but that's about it where i'm like man if i just sit there and take caitlin's notes for this i would and you just have to take it too like he he would you would see him like talk back a little bit kind of like are you fucking telling me are you telling me yeah, yeah, how yeah. to write and she would just be like <laughs> don't go there boss and it's just like oh fuck like she obviously paid him something and he doesn't have a shit ton of money as shown in the documentary he spends a lot on leather i'll just leave it at that huh he spends a lot on leather sure you would think that uh, Kardashian money was coming in nice. No, no, I'm saying Buzz. Oh, Buzz, Buzz, Buzz. So got I'm it, got sure it, got she, it. he yes. got paid yeah. a lot from yes. Caitlyn Jenner. And when he starts to talk back a little bit, you can see that moment of like, I'm getting paid a lot. I don't want to get, right? Sure. Uh, so that kind of comes into play. And like I said, Buzz is the one that spends a lot of money on leather. Ah, got it, got it, got it. Um, Things. Well, Heather. we'll stick with the Kardashian theme here and go Kanye. Uh, new Let's album is supposed it. to come out Friday. I heard he jumped on stage with Chance. Did. No album. So he's been doing these listening parties all weekend um, and these church services for the, the, the new album. And there's no album. No. It has not been released. So we're, we're on Monday now. And, and it's supposed to be, sorry, was supposed to be when? Black Friday of last year. mm uh, last uh, last Thanksgiving, so just gonna put and that what are, there. What are the um... so I I was looking for reviews because everybody's everybody's writing in. They're like, hey man, I want to hear this this crazy gospel slash rap album, whatever this is gonna be, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been reading the reviews. Rolling Stone had one that I guess the guy was there at the the, the one in Detroit. So he did Detroit, New York, and Chicago, mm-hmm. and was there for the Detroit one and. He said it was just so much chaos at this listening party that it's hard, it was hard to decipher who was coming in and out of, of songs or whatever. He said the whole event was amazing, by the way. He was like, dude, it, was, sure. it really was incredible. Sure. And that they had people, as soon as everybody was in, they locked the doors. And then they had people come in and disperse like uh, uh, clothes. Okay. His new clothing line. So uh-huh. he was giving out free clothes. Okay. And um, they were playing and it was like, it was just a huge goddamn party. And he goes... But to me, it sounded like an unfinished album. And I was like, oof. Because it is unfinished, right? I guess. I, I don't know, but is it was there supposed, an to album come out, out? supposed to come out Friday. Yeah, there, there is no album out. Okay, so it's unfinished. And yeah. I guess he had told the crowd, hey, man, I'm like, the, there's a song here. Because he was like, I guess before every song, he was kind of talking about it, you know, what the mm-hmm. song was and why he wrote it and whatever. And he goes, yeah, man, this one, I just recorded the verse like this morning before I got in. It was like, Huh? Um, I think that might be overestimating a classic case of overestimating your talent. You have oh, no. I, I will. So here's the defense of this: there is a lot of people in a lot of industries who, if given the time, if you were able to do this, because let's face it, only Kanye could do some bullshit like this, where you sure. just decide not to put it out until whenever you feel like it. Because any other musician in any record label no you're it's coming out on this day yeah you gotta turn it in everything else he's the only one who doesn't give a fuck if given all the creative control like this i think every artist in every form of life would fuck with it till the last second yes and that's why you need uh deadlines and structure yes. for artists so me, and especially people personally, like him yeah i get it i whatever it is on the date that i decide of when it's going to be due or a publisher or any of these movies or studios or whatever 
whatever that is, I will meet that deadline. I've never missed. And then that's what it is because I think it should be in a box. I think you, you, you can box creativity. The problem is if you start overthinking things, it'll be shitty. Um, or, you know, look, there's always the alternative. If you rush through something, it's shitty. But uh, um, me personally, I think there's got to be a stop point and be like, all right, whatever this is and however it's received, that was exactly what I was thinking or writing mm -hmm. at that exact moment in my life. Therefore, let's box it up and ship it out. And then if it's wrong or incorrect, try, we'll try better on the next time, right? Yeah. But this Chinese democracy shit of, you know, this Guns N' Roses method. Right. Remember that well, album that didn't come out for like yeah, 15 years? Where it, you're just like, hey. And it always will if you're a certain type of person. I, were, I used to work with a group that was like that. Very talented, but didn't have anybody in the group uh -huh. to put deadlines and mm. structure in it. So the tweaking of stuff, as you know, would take 10 years. Because yeah. things change, time change, you change. Yeah. If you don't put deadlines on the art, like it can evolve forever. 50K, yes. if you hadn't had that, like now you would have probably written a different, you know what I mean? There'll be different songs that come out. There's different places that you can go. There's like, yeah. if you don't put it in a box, it will just, right? Yes, and I think for me, I'm lucky on the creative side where comedy is limited. Um, because jokes get stale. So Yeah, you have to put it out when it's relevant right. or else it's not going to work. Exactly. exactly. And so those are parameters for that. Uh, other things, it's like, you know, documentaries, for example, or other things like, you know, it's just, you know, you will become irrelevant. Yeah. With anything. Like some kind of thing you did with cinematography is going to be done and used and sure. played out by the time you get it out. My last tweaks on all these books, for example, are usually jokes, punching up jokes and that's it, of like, all right, cool, man. Yes. This was, that joke is a few months old. But if we gotta you update that. Uh, Movie-wise, there's nothing you can do because it's shot and you can't go back and reshoot it. So it's like, eh, all right, let's just right. try to race this movie out you because this joke it might not be funny. Yeah. You can add little things, you can do reshoots of things to kind of tweak the storyline, yeah, I don't recommend it, but it's possible. You know what I mean? You can evolve a story. It is to make it fit any, you know, any time. Should now you I've, do it? No. Now <laughs> I feel dicey about this album. When I'm like, come on, man. Uh, I saw a meme that it was like Kanye's going to put out a blank CD and just tell you to imagine it. <laughs> That's going to be the next move for him. Just imagine the music, and and it <sighs> also said, "Motherfuckers will do it." Baby, baby, motherfuckers baby. will be into it. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, fall is here, Jabe's. Fall is here. Sad boy, fall. Sad I boy don't. Fall. I don't subscribe to Thoughtum. You, you guys. I've been getting a lot of messages. How about not a lot of messages? I'm not gonna lie. I've gotten two. Thoughtum. But anyway, I like Thoughtum. That. Yeah. But it's very mainstream now. Thoughtum. Oh, it is. Okay. Yes, and it feels a little bit like somebody trying to give themselves a nickname, right? Some. The forcing it. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, like yeah. Starbucks is posting Thoughtum and mm. stuff like this where it's just not working for me in the same way that Hot Girl Summer kind of organically happened. You came up with Sad Boy Fall, right? Yeah. Um, white people ruin everything where yeah. it's like, oh, last summer had a name. Now we're going to make Autumn have a name. Yeah. Thoughtum and putting it on everything and being like, we're going to make Thoughtum happen. It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen here. It's not going to happen in my house. Okay? No. And it's not going to happen on this show. Not under your watch. Sad boy fall. And again, I'm not even forcing that down your throat. Yeah. Am I? Sad boy fall. It's just something that's happening. Sure. You know, it's something sure. that's happening in, very, very sad boy fall. in our hearts and our minds. <laughs> and in our cups. <laughs> Ooh. 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 It's a sad boy fall. Anything that makes you just Ooh. feel sad boy Ooh. fall, do it. Don't feel bad about being sad, by the way, guys. Yeah. When the, the changing of the season, it can bring a little bit of... It doesn't for me. I just want this. Like, this, the summer's good. I saw a, a thing in Montana. You're all good on summer? Yeah, I'm done with summer. I'm fucking done with it. I saw a thing where uh, Montana got 41 inches of snow yesterday. I saw that. And I was like... You were jealous or... Sort of. I was like, let's let's get out of the heat now. Mm -hmm. We're all done. I think 
think we're done. Yeah. Um, we're all we're all done with it, and, and especially when the baseball playoffs start. I feel like it should be more cooler. You know, cooler, just where you see you see fans wearing jackets. Uh, this is a fun postseason for us because both of our teams made it. Yeah. So, oh, can you imagine, dude? Yankees Braves. It'd be the best. <sighs> it would be the best. It'd be the best. It'd be the best. We'd and be a house divided. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to have one kid be on your team. One be on yours. Yeah. Yeah. Who you choose him? I mean, I'll take the better one. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. Yeah. We'll see how this all shakes out. The beauty of it is, this is what I like about baseball. Is like It starts like tomorrow. Where you're just like, oh, so, the, the season ended yesterday. It's like, yep, sorry, we're starting tomorrow. Yeah. Well, Sad Boy Fall will come in one second. As you remember, every year before, Yeah. we're like this, we're saying this exact thing, and then the next day, it's freezing. I'll, it's I'll not take, a slow, it's not a slow transition out here. I'll take freezing. I know. I'm just saying we don't get a slow transition in North Carolina these days to where it's like, it's hot, 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 hot. Right. And then it's freezing. Yeah. We don't get the like, oh, it's, oh, it's oh I can wear a, a light sweater. Yeah. No, we don't get the light sweater. We get sweating your face off. To a parka. We'll be in New York in a couple of weeks. Maybe it'll be uh, cooler then. No. I heard it's going to be in the 80s. In New York? Yes. Shit. Yes. Eh, I'll so. take 80s in New York. That's not bad. Nights will be. I would love for it to be a, a, a seven in front of that, but sure. But I think the nights, <laughs> the nights will be a seven. Yeah. It'll be 70s at night, I would say. Yeah. You don't need to be out and about during the day in New York. Dumb. That's not bad. 80s. Uh, I'll take dumb. 80. Well, look, we're, I was doing 94 on Saturday, so. Yeah. I'll take an 80. You can throw up an 80 in my face. I'm fine with it. You uh, think until you get out in there. We got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air, Jabes. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Man, the ghost bed is, is uh, I'd like to put one in the front yard and just have the leaves fall on that and then me sleep oh, underneath the that autumn be leaves. So nice. It'd be great, wouldn't it? It'd be great. 80s. 60s. Snow leaves falling on you, friend. 60s. There is. So the, the tree next to my car, all the leaves were off today. And I was like, oh. They were brown. It's 90 yeah. fucking, fi- like you just melted off. You just burned off the leaves is mm-hmm. what they did. Mm-hmm. They didn't fall. They didn't do nothing. I know. The azaleas aren't even going to bloom this year. <laughs> uh, Ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros. We can go to get the finest mattresses on the planet. Uh, their pillows are second to none. And they've also got sheets. And they've also got adjustable bases. Their sheets are the best. Sheets are the best. Um, the adjustable base we don't have because I, we have a cow king. So It's rough. It's rough with the cow king. With, uh, uh, because of, uh, uh. What's the difference in that? Do you know? Longer. Is it? So it's thinner and it's longer. All right. Look, I'll go a blinking and sleep with my feet off the end if I can get a remote controlled shit. Yeah, and like sheets that aren't hard to get and everything. It's like you need fucking custom everything. I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. Maybe we'll switch it up. I would like also a, a, I would like more space between us. Too. Yeah, well, obviously. Wouldn't that be great? Javes, you could sleep with Oh, I could pinwheel around. You could go, around. you could go uh Michael Jackson. You can go MJ. You could sleep in an oxygen chamber, I think it'd be good. Oh, yeah. I could also do that fentanyl no to go to sleep too. No. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, just when I'm ready. Yeah. Oof! If someone could just put me down for the night. Well, uh, there's a lot of places I can do that, James. You know? What? You can go to some junkie on the corner and get some fentanyl. No, know, I want day. it to be a doctor. <laughs> you want your own Doctor Conrad? Yeah, we'll get a different one. Obviously. That didn't work out that That well. Whoopsie! That didn't work out. Good night, night, night. Right, forever. I I saw somebody sent me in a creepy photo of Michael Jackson dead. Um, Don't. And and he had his eyes open. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna post it. Obviously, I know, uh, but nobody wants. I don't know if it was real. It looked real to me. It did look real to me. I will say that. Where did you get? Where'd you get this? Uh, I got on Facebook. Somebody sent it to me. Yeah. I don't real. trust it if it's on. Yeah. Uh, look, if 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 you want to get off the fentanyl and get back to a normal <laughs> sleep schedule, go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Just get yourself a night. mattress, $200 off the Ghost Lux. 
hundred dollars off the Classico. And uh, look, the the thirty six month pay as you go program, no interest. I I looked it up. I, I think it's like forty bucks a month, man, for like thirty eight bucks a month for some of these fucking mattresses. Oh yeah, if you do like the thirty six, yeah. yeah, not even. I don't think. Yeah, and I was just like, shit. That's what the that's and and no interest on that. It's crazy, man. Uh, thank you, Ghost Bad. Also, if, if you were military or a first responder. You get 15% off forever. Scroll to the bottom of the page. Click it on the checkout at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinks. Shabloinkers. Strikeforce Energy has got four amazing flavors. Grape, lemon, orange, and a ridge. No carbs, no sugars. Everybody is adding this to White Claw. Every single person is adding this to White Claw. I get it. It doesn't have a, a strong enough flavor in White Claw. This just kicks it up a notch, and there's no carbs and sugars, and it's a nice- Gives you a little bit of energy. Five-hour kick, dude. That is the new- Perfect. Shit, by the way. That is just the new shit all the way around. And I'm starting to see, I know we talked about this last week, but I'm starting to see it more and more. Dude's con- converting over to White Claw. I've seen it as well. Yeah. It's, dude, it's going to be a thing. I'm telling you. I know. The ABV is too high and the calories are too low. Until you can match it, then that's probably what's going to go down. Uh, you can also put a little vodka in it and really kick things up a notch. You need to get to my wine percentage, though, for me to take a little look. See, at well, that. there is there is cans of wine now. Um, yeah, no. Uh, if you can 13. get that, if you can, yeah. So wine is 14 between 13 yeah, and 14. Yeah, yeah. If you can get. A white claw tasting calorie, the same calorie uh-huh. beer yeah. that is at the same level as my wine. I'll give you a, uh, I'll give it a look. See, one person is doing that or trying to do it, and it's four loco. So we'll see what happens. I feel like that one might be too sweet. Don't make it too sweet for loco, please. It, it's it's going to have do. no. It, they're going to have to go no carbs and sugars because I know, but they can do a fake compete. sugar sweetness. Which I don't care I don't about want. that. Uh, I don't want it to be sweet, though. Either do you. You don't want it to be a sweet I'd like fucking... To, I'd like to have a little more taste in White Claw. You know, just a, a hint more. That's it. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com if you're clawing it up. No laws with the claws. And then you put some of this in there and stay for five hours. Boom. You're ready to rock. Uh, strikeforceenergy.com, as always, has a uh, subscription on the program, which we've had for years and years now at this point. It's been four years now. Jesus Christ. Um, also... The promo code is REVOLUTION for 20% off, and they ship everywhere in the entire world. Last but not least, straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? There it is, James. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. There it is. We had a little stank on that one. We did today. I we like it. We put a little stank on that. Straightrazors.com is everything you need to be a real man in this life. A real hombre. Uh, look, they got fucking shaving products. Their straight razors are second to none. They got safety razors, shampoos, conditioners, beard, oils, mustache, waxes. You name it. They've got shit. Um, oh, mustache, waxes? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to, every year I get a little, little tin of uh, oh, mustache yeah. wax. I'm going to grow when it out. When are you starting that? I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, probably November is when I usually go. Okay. Um, that way it's a safe space. Everybody else is doing it, you know, where it's mm-hmm. just like, right, I can jump off and I don't have to hear the fucking comments of like. Are you going to do the. Down. You want you want all the way down? Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do it for the and then a little you know, little here. patch right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that for you. A little three dog night. Yeah, you know what you I mean? burned it. You burned it. <laughs> We're gonna have to fix that. Cut that hair too. S- yeah, no. Straightrazors dot com promo code Revolution twenty percent off. Um, lot going on today. Um, in a lot of different facets. Um. Okay. It's getting weird out there. Okay. It's getting weird out there. There was a, a reverend who was talking about a, a civil war if there was an impeachment of Trump. Uh-huh. And I don't know if that's possible in today's world anymore. Oh, what? Civil war in America. Trump, uh, it, yeah, he no, retweeted it, uh, and uh, uh, it was one of those things where it was just like, people were actually talking about it, whether or not this would happen. And number one trending right now is civil war sign up. 
Um, look, the left obviously wouldn't be able to use guns. So, yeah, but it'd, it'd be probably rough. be pretty quick. It'd probably be a pretty quick war. But sure. Um, I don't think I was. I was trying to think about it in like in realistic terms of like whether or not that could happen in today's society, and I don't think so. You look at even these small dust ups with like Antifa and shit versus mm-hmm. whoever, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Proud Boys are like. I, I just think. I don't think it could happen in today's America. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I was uh, listening to a thing about Kent University. Yeah, uh, during the shootings. Yeah, yeah. and that in was the 60s? yeah, and that was sort of not the closest, but I mean, it was Americans shooting into right, right, and that was kind of exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and we still talk about it that it was just the worst thing that's ever happened. So, oh yeah. Again, it, it would be. It'd be one side like that, unarmed, gun-wise. I mean, uh-huh. they're causing problems. <laughs> Lighting things on fire, throwing bottles, shit like this, being just crazy. But it's the other side with the guns just shooting at them into yeah. the crowd. Yeah. So, and that was kind of talked about as like Americans shooting other Americans, right? Yeah, and I look, I look what's going on in Hong Kong right now because they've got, this thing against the government and everything else, and they still haven't done anything or overthrown anything. So I, I just don't think that's actually possible. The way people are talking about it, though, are like, oh, yeah, this could, this could absolutely go down. I don't think it could go down in today's society. There's too many cameras. Yeah. There's too much shit. Um, you know, obviously the last one we had was the actual Civil War. Yeah. Like, right? there's too much shit. There, there's no way. Yeah, I, I don't even know. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's not, that's not a, a conversation. Th- I mean, it's not happening. I don't think so, so. either, man. So I, I, to me, it felt like a slow news day for them. And they were like, dude, let's ramp this up. Let's see if we really can. Yeah. Let's see if we really, this about- could really happen. It's like, no, this, this actually can't. And I feel like with the media now, like, especially on a slow news day, they're like, eh, maybe we can run this story and see mm-hmm. if it'll happen. See what happens. They, see what we see can if people get real up. ramped up about it. Uh, no. See what they think. I'm calling, I'm calling this out. No, this can't happen in today's no. society. It absolutely cannot happen. Uh, the other thing that, that they were saying is they hope to get this impeachment vote by the end of the year. Um, the, the Democrats really, really hope for that, right? I bet they do. Yeah, which, which <laughs> is strange to me. It's because not really how it's going to go. But. No, not at all. And I like how you want to put it on your own timeline so that way you can get the election back on track in 2020. <laughs> yes. Definitely not how this works. No, it will drag right on through all of that. And I think people are realizing like what a dumb idea this was to start mm-hmm. with. We watched Saturday Night Live um, the, the other night. Just We were dying to see that Billie Eilish thing, right? Which she was rad in that she performance. Was awesome. That was, a, was one camera mistake away from being... They've been away for a while. Yeah. You know, ah. it's their first, their first uh, show back. It was really good. I haven't seen anybody do that on stage before. Yeah, it was And it cool. was awesome. Like, good for her. It was a great performance. And uh, that's like an all-timer for me yeah. on SNL probably. Um, but I was surprised to see, because there was a couple, we watched a few sketches before it, which are, oof. I know I go all, uh, I went all in on SNL a few weeks ago. And it's like, man, the first of all, the guy that they hired, the Asian guy, mm-hmm. who it was the first Asian cast member ever. And then the very first sketch they put him in, the very first one is a stereotypical Kim Jong-un he's sketch Kim Jong-un. where it's just like, oh, mm-hmm. he's doing the voice that you do. And I'm like, oh boy. But it's okay for him to do it. Because he's Asian mm-hmm. and not, it just felt so weird. And I'm like, man, why did you? I, I, out of the gate. So cringy. Out of the gate. They Opening really, sketch? Yep. They really went First for show it. of the season, they did the, oh, no, Mr. Trump. You used to hire somebody in the sea. Mm-hmm. Like his exact voice. Um, I'm not even exaggerating it. And with that, I was like, ah, where do you go after this? And I was surprised that they did a full-on Democrat sketch where I was like, oh, shit. When's the last time they did that? Democrat sketch. That's it. A pure Democratic sketch. Uh, the one where they were doing the debates. Mm-hmm. And the, at the end, they were like, well, these are our candidates, people. This is who we have to Trump choose from. Trump wasn't involved and, at all. They were really just going after. Which is, which is weird because. 
So they kind of did both. So they did one for them. One, one for them. One, one the for Trump. yeah. Yeah, and then the news that went, you know, same as always, Obviously. all on Trump. But like, um, the, the interesting part about it was, if if the Saturday Night Live writers think the same thing that we were thinking of, like, hey man, you just don't have any candidates for next year. Yeah. Um, what are you trying to get across? And that's what I always try to think about, um, with media and sketches and things like these of like. Because there's been this one lurking thing in the background that keeps popping up where I just see this article and I don't know if it's wishful thinking or it's an actual thing. Mm -hmm. But there is odds in Vegas that still say that Hillary is going to pop back in at the end of this thing. (laughs) Keeps popping up. That's insane. I know. But what do you what do you do at this point? So now, look, you have the impeachment where they want it done by the end of the year Mm -hmm. because I, I think they realize they fucked up and this isn't going anywhere. And then you want to try to get your candidates back on track, which you, you're, even if, the, if it goes down by the end of the year, you still bury your candidates for the next three months, right? Yeah. But then they're not great anyways. So what do you do? What do you do at that point? You just have her come out after and go. Is that even possible? No, right? Because you have to win. You well, have the, to... But the primaries don't start till next year. So like, it is possible that she could just pop back on in and be like, hey, it's me. Hey, it's me. I'm done walking in the woods. Yeah. So I don't know, but like there is odds in Vegas where you can bet on this. And she's one of the favorites in a lot of these things. And I'm like, in what world? In what world is that? In a fantasy world filled with fairy tales. Yeah. Fairy tales with your money and your fairy tales. Maya Rudolph, by the way, did an excellent Kamala Uh. Harris. And amazing. It was really, really funny. I was. That little girl. So fucking good. That was the last. Nailed it, it, dude. It also reminded me. Woody Harrelson was really good, by the way, um, as the host. He's but great. He's always good. Uh, it reminded me, though, like, I was like, man, when she came on, I was like, that was the, that was the last time this show was great. It was with all of them, because Maya Rudolph she, and all of them. Because they didn't mind going after anyone. I think last season, they wouldn't have made fun of Kamala Harris. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Or Cory Booker or anything. It was like, that. it was all Trump. All making fun of him. Unless you know what it is, the shit show that it is now. Like, um, that's the, that was my only thought process behind it. But it was nice to see Maya Rudolph back. God damn it, she's funny, man. She's so good. That cast was so great. They were so And it was legendary. mostly women. I know. That were great. I know. It was Maya Rudolph, Tina Fey. Amy Faye. Poehler, Tina, Tina Fey. Like. Well, when Tina Fey was the head writer, I think was the best that yes. that show has ever been. And yeah, there yeah, was yeah. a couple cast that kind of came under her but dude mm. but yeah but seeing her back again i was like man I'm, I'm i'm amped about this but it was weird to see that even they were in the camp of like hey man what do we do with these people um but this good luck on the impeachment thing being done by the end of the year no have fun with all of that um, uh do we know how long did clinton's take fucking forever right i thought it was like 18 months right that sounds right to me somewhere in there yeah. um crazy thing is i want to give a shout out to ryan murphy um real quick uh so he created american horror all the american horror mm-hmm. stories glee all that stuff he signed a mega deal with uh netflix to come on and produce original shit for them okay and he did the people the people versus oj simpson which won you know a gajillion awards and right. was my favorite i i, I still with cuba like versace as well too. oh yeah, yeah versace was fucking awesome uh he did that one as well right mm-hmm. so guess what his next one is what Impeachment. Case. Oh, it's Bill Clinton, <gasps> and I'm excited. So people were pissed, where they were like, "Hey, man, why no. now?" And because you have to see. But but here's the thing. So I, you know, and I think we did talk about this a couple months ago when this was casting and all that stuff, right? He didn't know then that this was going to happen. Now this show in the middle of this time. Dude, it's going to explode. He must have, because like I've, I've been saying for a while, that it is reminiscent of how the Republicans treated uh, Bill Clinton. We'll see. It's I, reminiscent of like, it was this building of like hatred, 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 making fun of hatred, wanting him out. And finally that happened. Yeah. Do you know? So if anyone was paying attention or, you know, thought thought back to that. It's, it's very similar in a lot of ways. So that, that's what I'm curious to see as this show comes out, because I don't remember, you know, I just wasn't 
I don't think anybody really gets into politics or cares about it until you're fucking 30s until you're actually making money where you're just like hey man all right, right. cool man you right. know now I'm, i care because of taxes <laughs> so the shit yeah. like i think when you're you know 18 and i think your and you're favorite able to vote yeah it's like oh man i believe in hope and there's so much going on in the world and then after that your, your hope is taken away and you're like ah, i think it's it, it's pretty much just about money and, and a couple things yes. that i want the rest of it's probably not what i'm gonna get anyways i remember just distinctly my dad being like you know, he was making the most money or like the money was the best when Clinton was in office. And that's why people. Well, you had the, you had the dot coms that were the IPOs that were just absolutely murdering. The stock market was murdering it. Um, ironically, the stock market and everything's murdering it now. And it's like, man, two different right. times, two different presidents. Right. But like the economy is going great. Economy is going great, great under Clinton. It was, and but like I said, he was dealing with the same stuff behind the scenes, uh -huh. but the economy was great. Yeah. So people, at, look, I didn't mind it. Fuck it. Uh, breaking news, Stranger Things just got renewed for uh, season four. How much longer do you think they have of, of this? Because we watched the last one, which I really loved, by the way. It was really good. Whoever their set designer was, whoever did in the, the wardrobe, um, for all that 80s shit, that was the most realistic 80s recreation it that I've ever like seen. It wasn't cheesy hand. or over the top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was great, and I really, really loved it. Um, but I remember turning to you because the kids are older now, and they're visibly getting older. Where you're just like, yes, and, yo, and they know uh, visibly getting older, and uh, they know how famous they are. They know how famous they are. They think that they are amazing. Which, look, I would too at that age, so I'm not even going to shit on that. Uh, but what They're I would like, like to see with this cool show... cool for school. What I would like to see with this show is probably five seasons and then call it a day. I think it's one of those... Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go more than this next season, to be honest. I think it's one of those things where I would like to see them get to college. Like, go finish high school. Okay. And then end it there. Um, I don't want to see them go to college in this thing. No, 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 no. Like, I don't want to see them in college coming back to fight monsters. Like, uh -uh, uh -uh. just get us through high school. And yeah. I think I'd be cool with it. But I think we'd be good with uh, So that. far, they're three for three in my eyes. All three seasons were really, really great. And I enjoyed all of them. Yeah. Um, so. The last one, I have to say, like, didn't. I loved it. It was amazing when it was over. I didn't. I wasn't like, oh, I wish there was more. Mm. So, whereas I, I thought the ended, last two I did. I, I thought it ended right where it should have. Um, I, yeah, I was stoked about it. But that's what I mean is like that could have been a, a button on all that. Maybe. These kids are getting paid, yeah. son. Yeah. And uh, the Duffer brothers just signed up a huge overall deal with uh, uh, film and TV with Netflix. So, they're going to be doing a lot of things with them. Well, they're fucking great. So. I know. I know. So, I'm, look, I'm, I'm amped about that. Uh, but yeah, if they could cap it right before they go to high school and then have a nice like send off before mm -hmm. they all go on their their ways, uh, I think that would be awesome. Um, I hope the rights to Shemstones gets picked up for another season as well. So good. Yes. The fact that there's a dick in every single every episode. Scene. You guys will notice that this last episode, that's my joke. Yeah. The dick in the beginning <laughs> is my joke. Somebody was listening to the show. Yeah. I, look, yeah, there, there's a lot of things on there that are close, man. I love those guys. It's, uh, it's been fun. So hopefully that goes a, a season two as well. I think it will. The ratings are doing pretty well. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, please do, because that's the only way it'll come back. Yeah. Uh, is if, if the ratings are strong. But I've been. I've talked to a lot of people that haven't. Watched it. I think, interesting I think me. I know why. Um, I think with all of these apps and streaming and all this shit, like, uh, and it getting pulled from things, like it got, look, we have Dish, right? Mm -hmm. HBO got pulled from Dish. Mm -hmm. It has not come back. It has been no, that's off, 14 but or 15 months. These are people that have HBO that haven't watched it and then for various reasons. One is like, I just want to watch the whole thing. You know, binge it once all the episodes are okay, done. I can see that. Um, the other one's like, ah, I don't. It's one of those that you feel like you have a lot of time to check out. 
right? Yeah. It's not like, oh my gosh, I need to see it because it's comedy, right? And people aren't like chomping at the bit to make sure. Yes, but I'm just yeah. saying, I'm wondering why, like I said, I've talked to maybe three different people that have HBO, uh-huh. have the streaming, and haven't checked it out yet. I'm like, huh. Interesting. So I, because my thought was a different process, like that because all of these cable providers are getting in these carriage wars, right? Where they look, they ripped off HBO off ours. It wasn't a big deal because we have the apps for it. Yeah. What became a big deal to me was Friday when they took down all the sports networks. And it's going to be a phone call this afternoon to Dish where Ooh, it's like, hey, man. Fun yeah. For you. It always is. <laughs> Always is Ooh, lucky. Yeah, every <laughs> single time because they pulled down the Big Ten Network, which is Ohio State's conference. Um, luckily, we're number four in the nation, so most of our games are in prime time and on different channels. That's fine. Right. But they pulled down Fox Sports One, where look, man, it, it's MLB playoff time now. There's games that are on that network. I do mm-hmm. not get that. That is a simple. Fox Sports is pretty basic these days, so. Mm-hmm. You're pulling that from me, and there's going to be some rage over it because that was combined, I think, about 15 or 16 channels, and then HBO is gone. Um, And it's like, hey, man, you're starting to lose everything at this point. Right. So what are we doing anymore? Mm -hmm. Why am I paying for this? Yeah. Well, once the sports go, you should be Oh, I am out. I am no longer there, yeah. Once the sports go, that is is it. We're all finished with this uh, cable and, and all that other shit. Um, but we'll see. So I don't know. I'll, I'll have a nice little chat with them today. And we'll see how that goes. Because if none oh. of that's coming back, then there's no reason to have no. it for me personally. Like, no. Um, ESPN is an app now. NBC Sports is a fucking app now. So it's like, hey, we're all done with you. I'm sure they have a Bravo app, right? They do. Okay. They do. I can get Sling, whenever you know, and then just app around it. I guess. Bunch of weird charges now on the fucking card. Uh, but that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about this Smiley Cyrus thing that okay. uh, popped up over the weekend. They've, they've been trying to do this in L.A. for a long time, and it's finally happening. Uh, so Miley Cyrus backed this cannabis cafe, which is kind of like it's bringing Amsterdam to Hollywood, essentially, where you, know, you can smoke at okay. the restaurant, and then they bring you hand-rolled joints. So you, sit, you can sit, have a meal, a glass of wine, and then just smoke Sounds weed. Like a- fucking nightmare that's what i wanted to ask you about <laughs> well i'm not the person to ask buddy that's all that sounds like a fucking i'm getting i'm sweating just thinking about so here's the thing with me like actually dude. smoking flour like i would be so wasted dude <laughs> and just like out of it and tired and like no 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 no, no. in la Who's going to be there? No. So this is what no. I was thinking about, too. Because <laughs> they've got pictures of the inside of it, right? And it's gorgeous. They really I'm went sure. all out for it. Make it and, a restaurant uh, with wine and I'll be there. Lowell Cafe. We'll give them a shout out because it's... Lowell, like L-O-L? Uh, L-O-W-E-L-L. Okay. Why, why was that the hardest fucking word for me to spell out? Lowell. Lowell? Lowell. Um, anyways, they've got pizza. They've got, you know, I'm mm-hmm. sure it's like upscale. Mm-hmm. It looks like upscale, you know, food, like an upscale pub And all type of everybody thing. is going to be thinking is, I just want to eat this in my bathtub. Yeah. Alone. Because this is not fun. So they're saying, and also like, look, they have a flower host that is, you're welcome, also known as the bud tender. You're also welcome for that one. And that is real. That is what they are that going to. That will last about. <laughs> the grand opening i think will be the most people that are that will be in there so here's what they're saying they're they're going to help you with your cannabis orders that will kind of regulate it for you of how high you get of like uh-uh. whether you're snoop dog level or like you have a losing since battle high friend that's what i think you can't do it can't do it and all i kept thinking uh, uh oh here we go here's here's the menu we got the menu for this you ready great talk to me uh, each dish will have a suggested product to smoke or vape with. So you can uh, you can vape it, I guess. So you can have a little uh, cool. You could totally do that at home. Pipes on the couch and order pizza. But go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I really don't see any reason to be out in public doing this. The opening menu will include miso glazed pork belly, jalapeno mac and cheese bites. Never heard of that, but 
that sounds delicious, actually. It's just macaroni and cheese Vegan bites. nachos. That is not going to work for me. Uh-uh, no thank you. Sticky tamarind wings. Uh, house-made no, pickles. No, bro, you do not want to be eating wings. And avocado with uh, white bean hummus. Um, all you have to do is be 21, valid ID, and that's it. And you can consume edibles, smoke joints, vape both inside the dining room and on the side patio, and smoke joints. Man, that's a weird thing because you 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 also like couldn't smoke cigarettes inside or and outside of buildings. So now you can in L.A. I guess. Uh, <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever. Heard. You can also smoke or consume edibles you bring from home for a small tokage fee, similar to a corkage fee. So I guess they take it out for you and roll it for you. I don't know how that works. Uh, you can use your own bongs or pipes to smoke or rent one from the restaurant. Just rent a bong from the restaurant. I guess this would be good for tourists. So okay. people that are coming there and it's not legal in their state. So if you want to tra- travel from North Carolina and do this, sure, maybe. Okay. Um, b- because if you are going to make it like Amsterdam, right, that's how it is there. It is legal, but they still have these places. And they're filled with mostly Americans that think it's fucking cool, yeah. right? I would do it once for the novelty of it. Here's where I wouldn't do it, and here's where I think is going to happen. I think you're going to start to get into some business meetings out in L.A. But let's face it. Everything you do there is dinner, drinks, yeah. or fucking afternoon drinks, or whatever it is, right? All these meetings. Nobody would suggest that for a meeting. I with think me. they would. I think there's going to be people who are like, hey, because every, look, every agent and manager is trying to out-hip you of like, oh, I know this place. Mm. I want to go to this place. What's going on? Do you smoke weed? You Have smoke, you been to the you smoke cannabis? You Have smoke, you been to the lull? Exactly. You smoke, you smoke flour? Let's go to the lull and check it out. I think that's what's going to happen. And for me personally, no thank you. I would go just to do it on like a, uh, like a Thursday night just to see it and get high as shit and then bounce. Once on a, re- like on a regular, this would not be my hang where I'm like, hey, man, I'm just going to. I cannot smoke weed like that nope. to the point where. Look, if you're Miley Cyrus, have fun. Clearly that bitch can fucking smoke weed, yeah. smoke weed and be functional. I don't know. We have friends with a high tolerance and I'm envious of that. I am not one of these people. I can't go to, I couldn't sit down, smoke a full joint and have a serious conversation with you and then remember what I said to you later. Yeah. Maybe this is just like two dork, dork patrol nerd alert. Maybe we're not the people to be talking. I don't, th- I don't, I don't think it's that. <laughs> I don't think it's that. I think it genuinely is that, to me, I would rather smoke and be home or smoke and do something else rather than sit in a restaurant with a bunch of people, right? Yeah. Because the paranoia, I think, would set in where it's just like- But I think think there's people that don't have that. I think so, too. So good for them. So maybe this might do well. Yeah. And maybe this becomes a thing. Yeah. I hope not. The other thing is, I really though, hope not. You, once you roll out of there, if everybody's smoking Ooh. in a restaurant, you're going to reek like weed for the rest of the day. Here's the thing. The food doesn't sound good. Food now, sounds all right. And I'm not The pizza's high. not on the menu yet, they said, so. Uh, they're, but they're working on a flatbread. A flatbread? A flatbread. They're working on a flatbread. Okay. So... Well, good for all of them, and I'm just, I'm really these are gonna so start, happy These are going to start them. popping up everywhere, by the way. I'm telling you. Um, the Mike Tyson thing, man, that's, that's another one where it's just like his resort is almost open. What is it? I think it's like a hotel is like 120 rooms and all this shit. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you just smoke weed? or Yeah, man. Okay. It's there for you. I remember, I remember when, when Colorado first legalized it, and uh, we were doing live shows there. And we rolled into town of the Airbnb and like, oh yeah, they, they had weed set, it set out and bongs and all and this other shit. And I was just like, makes oh. more sense to me. Yeah, like in your hotel room, that kind of thing that makes more sense than like be going to a restaurant. Yeah, we'll see. We'll it, see what happens on that. It's um, just me, man. But I will say this: it'll probably be packed. 
right? Everybody's for a while, try this yeah, out. for a while, and then it just won't be anymore. As with everything that is not a great idea, <laughs> it'll lose its sheen, right? It'll start smelling, stinking. You'll walk in just like, ooh, ooh, ooh. people are smoking weed in here. Ooh, yeah, hi, yeah, hello, hello, yeah. It'll just start smelling like a basement, like your uncle's basement. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are they going to be playing a lot of that? That's what I wonder. Is there a DJ? What, what Gosh, happens? Gosh, I in hope there? so. I hope it's all of that <laughs> retardedness and more. I hope there's a fucking stupid DJ in the middle of the day. I hope they do brunches there. Ooh, I hope it's a big daytime brunch place. I think and so. I, they just fucking smoke all their dumb little faces off. And I'm happy for them. I think here's where I would get down with it. Maybe on a Sunday brunch sitch, endless mimosas, and then just smoking weed so you can pass out and like, you know. Here's also something you get can do. Get a nice nap on a Sunday, no kids. Yeah, and I hear all that. Here's mm-hmm. also something you do. You can go to a brunch place, endless mimosas, go home, smoke some weed, pass out. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure, sure. I don't sure. think you need to be in the lull to have a mimosa brunch and smoke some weed. I'll do it once. I can, I, I can already see all the Instagram stories from friends, though, that are going to do this. I guarantee it. Yeah, well. Your good. mom what? Huh? Let's talk about your mom. See, so your mom would do it? No, I didn't say that. You think she would? Uh, no. Really? Mm-hmm. I could see your parents getting down there. My mom doesn't love uh, kid weed. She is a mom weed smoker, which is... Shake, ah, uh, B grades, old school, yeah, yeah, yeah. homegrown. Yeah. Um, so this new shit, she's not too into it. Really, and she owns. And a she weed, used to she be. Owns a weed place. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, she's I, not I love an idiot. It, by the way. That's why. Yeah, she owns a weed place in yeah, Ohio. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, say the name of it. It's is it Shangri La? Shangri La. Yeah. yeah. So if you're in Ojai, there's like four dispensaries. She owns one of them. And, Hers uh, is the best. the best. I'm not just saying that. We went to all the different ones. I tried every single best. one of them yeah. out and I said, look, I'll give you an honest opinion of just what it best is. Best service, best stuff, best prices. That's all we're going that's off it. of. That's it. Because look, it could be anything in there mm-hmm. and those goddamn things. And that's all you're looking for. Um, so uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, James, shall we? We shall. Um, it's not Kanye because he doesn't have the fucking album out. I don't. I hope it's never him. <laughs> It'll be a sad day. Uh, this is a weird one. Um, this is, this is going to go to a guy uh, from the Oakland Raiders, a linebacker. Um, his name is Vontez Perfect. And uh, yeah, here, here's look. If you're a football fan, you know you know exactly who he is. The guy just smashes people. Dirtiest player in the biz for a reason. Uh, there was a violent hit yesterday uh, against the quarterback. Um, uh, no, against the uh, fucking tight end for uh, Indianapolis Colts. I think it was Jack Doyle who got just absolutely fucking rocked. Helmet to helmet. Mm. You've seen these plays happen, and you're like, holy shit. He, this is the first time that I can remember from one hit that he is suspended for the entire season now. So he's out. They just, oh. This is breaking news right now. Um, they just threw him out of the league for the rest of the year from this, this one hit. Now, he's been suspended a shit ton of times in the past. He made the hit or he got he hit? He made it. Oh. He made the hit, yeah. The helmet. Helmet to helmet, yeah. Fuck him. So, I, look, that's what I say. I'm getting more and more pissed when I see that. Like I, I know. In games, the one that we watched with Dan and Gat, you know? Yeah, yeah. That on purpose hit. Yeah. Is something that is just, it needs to be uh, unacceptable, right? Yeah. So, look, it's a 12, because they've played just four games. It's fucking stupid. So, this, this is a 12 game suspension. And, whew, I, who's the I, revolutionary I don't, person in this? The, the, him. The I, guy this, that made the hit? No, yeah. It, here's why this has never happened. So, if, if he is out, so he's going to appeal this, right? Mm hmm. If the appeal does not go through and he gets suspended the rest of the year this will be the first guy in the history of the nfl who's thrown out of the league for an entire season for for one hit uh, i think the revolutionary part of it would be the league right doing that 
I don't think he himself he's making fucking shitty, Maybe, but shitty I, I can, hits I can, and trying to but fucking I can tell you this. cuss motherfuckers. I can, I can he's tell not you this. revolutionary. It'll be called if this happens. This will be called the perfect rule, and they'll be like, "Hey, my, hey, guys, you want to come in and play fucking dirty? This guy got thrown out, and for one hit. So look, look, let's keep things on the up and up because you don't want to be this asshole." I mean, that is crazy. I I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with this. I've never heard of it. It's never happened. So it should for one hit. It should because he's a fucking dirty player and he always has been. But uh, an, an entire year has never happened. Who before. did he hit? Uh, he hit uh, the tight end for the Indianapolis Colts. So okay. but, you know, and it's he, Gruden's his coach, by the way. Yeah, Gruden was like, "Look, it's a tough decision. It's a tough call. I think it was a flag." Uh, it was very well documented that the league was going to review these plays this year in New York City. So that's what happened. And I'll wait to hear what their reasoning was. But it was a penalty for sure. He went in there with his head down and it was called. And unfortunately for us, it was an ejection, which it, they made that mandatory, I think, two years ago. Mm-hmm. The helmet to helmet. Like, hey, man, you're getting ejected for this if it's that on purpose. But no one has ever gotten thrown out of the league for the rest of the year. Shit. I mean... That's how violent it's getting. The one, mm-hmm. the game that we watched the other night, the Packers game, two people got po- yeah. carted off on stretchers. So it's not cool. Now, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's cool, mm-hmm. but uh, this never, I mean, back in the day, you never called helmet to helmet. Never. Right. Like it, it, Were you know, people doing wasn't even it a penalty. all the time? All the time. It wasn't even a penalty. Now, not only is it a penalty of 15 yards, which is a big, uh, but you're thrown out of the game. Now you could lose an entire season. Shit. So just don't do it. Let's just try and not do it. Is it really hard not to do it? Well, you're, so here's the other side of it, right? You're, you're going so fast. All the players are bigger, faster, stronger. If you duck There's, at the wrong moment, you take the first guy that got hit in that game the other night that you saw, went out on that stretcher. I watched it from a couple of different angles. The first few I saw, it looked like it was on purpose, and I was like, fuck this guy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because there was no flag on that play. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. There was not even a penalty on that. And then the other angles, I was like, man, because it's in slow motion, you're able to slow it down. You can see exactly where he got hit and why. But then when it was in real-time motion, you were like, man, that play is happening so fast that how do you... How do you call it? Your inch is off at that point. Yeah. How do you call it? Both guys are going so fast. I, I, I don't. I don't know. It is really tough. In the NFL itself, is going through some really hard times this year with with injuries. Mm-hmm. I think eight starting quarterbacks are out in the league right now. So, man, I, I'm not really sure what's going to happen with all this at the end of the day. Are they trying to save their own concussion by putting their head down? Because I guess if you just go. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to figure out why. You're trying to tackle. You're trying to tackle. But if you put your head down, you save your own like head being. Correct. So if you, so if you went in face up, saving yourself. if you went in face up, it could rock your head yeah, back yeah. as well. So I'm trying to think of it of like, why are, why are so many people doing it? But that is one explanation that I can. It is. Yeah. Handle. I and guess bigger, that you're trying to save your is, own head getting fucking knocked back because to put it in perspective the other guy that got knocked out in that Packers game was by his own guy and he was going in for a tackle yeah. missed it by three inches and hit his own guy yeah and knocked him out cold and shit man it's getting really really violent uh I I, I think I think be- this this one might be overturned actually I'm gonna I, I, I it would be hard to throw somebody out for the rest of the year I think okay. Um, but I think this motherfucker did it on purpose mm-hmm. and, and it, it, whichever way it goes, like I'm fine with it because yeah, this guy was a dirt bag already, but, uh, yeah, so we'll see, but that would absolute that this one guy could absolutely change the entire game and that would be a monumental thing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, cause if you're going to lose, look, you lose your money, you don't get paid. Oh yeah. So you were, that is it. So he got, he played four games. He's going to get that check. He's going to lose the last 12. I mean, you're, you're only getting paid for 25% of your season. And he's, this dude's 29 years old. He's only got a few years left. So, shit. That is breaking news, Jabes. 
Uh, sorry to go on and on about that, but uh, man, I've not seen it happen. Um, bumpkin summer for you. <laughs> oh, a little bl- blumpkin. Uh, sorry, not blumpkin nope, summer. Not blumpkin summer. For you. <laughs> Pumpkin summer is what it is for us, Javes. It is 94 degrees. There's pumpkin spice out everywhere. And we're, st- we're in a pumpkin summer today. Nope, not pumpkin summer. Not, not a pumpkin summer. That would be a totally different Blumpkin spice? <laughs> Just a little bit of shit in there. A little bit of shit smell in that pumpkin spice is what... Uh, it's cuter. I think I'm going to um, call it that. So a blumpkin is when you... Uh, <laughs> I think I'm just going to call it that. ...are receiving yeah, a No, we don't know. Nobody knows what it means. While and taking a shit. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, James. The Blumpkin Summer is now what we're going to name the episode. <laughs> okay. We're going to tell everyone just to blumpkin listen spice. to the last 30 seconds of this show to get a little blumpkin spice on it. <laughs> Go to, go to Starbucks and order a fucking Blumpkin Spice Latte. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, No, Blumpkin Spice Latte. Mm. Just sprinkle a little it's shit cuter. in it. It's cuter. It's yeah, cuter. some shit flakes in it. I don't know what it means, but it's cuter. <laughs> no one knows, actually. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.